the most important things for the OGA right now. The first thing is to try and push out decommissioning as much as possible. So to extend the late life of the assets. So, you know, we're working very hard with operators to increase the production efficiency, reduce the cost. So that's critical. So let's make sure that we push out the, the life of the assets as far as possible. So that when we have to decommissioning them, and let's be clear what decommissioning is, we have to plug in abandoned wells, we have to clean out pipelines, we have to make sure that facilities that need to be removed are removed, so it's a whole life cycle of things. When we come to that, uh, that we do it obviously safely, um, environmentally, we do it in the right way, and also on cost. And I think then when we do this, we have to do it far more strategically. So rather than ad hoc decommissioning in different places, what we'd like to do is to work with the industry so they can work in a collaborative way, so we can do it in a far more strategic way rather than sort of piecemeal and ad hoc. I think the cost analysis that the OGA have done, which is on a probabilistic basis from all of the inputs we've had through the stewardship survey, gives you a number of about 59 billion pounds, and there's a range around that. So we're driving it down to about 39 billion pounds as the target. Now that is quite consistent with other industries of taking out 35% or even more of cost, like the automobile industry have managed to do that, the aviation industry have managed to do that, so it's in line with other industries. So if you look at that big shift of, of the cost improvement, I'd say one particular area, which is uh, well abandonment. So well abandonment is about half of the cost. Okay, so if you take half that whole cost, how can you drive that down? A part of that right now is to work with the supply chain to look at how can we have better contracting strategies between operators and the supply chain. There's new companies that are being set up to try and do one-stop shop, for instance, which will cut down costs. The other way is through technology. And then I think the third way would be to try and, again, get the operators to work together in a sort of a club to collaborate, to work together in a multi-operator well abandonment campaign. So we're working with a number of operators right now to try and pull everything into, into one piece of work so that can be done far more efficiently, far more effectively and quicker. I think the supply chain on the technology side is absolutely critical, especially when it comes to well abandonment. You know, a lot of decommissioning is actually quite simple technology, it's just remove something. But when it comes to well abandonment, technology is very, very important indeed. So I think the supply chain and technology on the well abandonment side is critical. I think one thing we have to have far better is the sort of the commercial arrangements between the supply chain and the operators. Because sometimes it's a little bit adversarial, I think it needs to be more in a partnership. Uh, where they work together for a, for a common goal, where sometimes it, it's not quite lined up like that. And I think the third thing is that we need to build the capability and capacity of the UK decommissioning supply chain so it can be exported globally, so that that knowledge can be used in other parts of the world. Because our basin is more mature than other areas, so we are a little bit more advanced than certain parts of the world, so we can export that knowledge to other parts to, to undertake decommissioning more effectively in those areas. So I think if you look at collaboration and you talk about where is the industry, I think it really is collaborating. Uh, I think there are not that many barriers, in fact, and you have the uh, trade associations like Decom North Sea, um, they get together with the supply chain and work with the operators. Um, I'm involved with the decommissioning task force, which is a forum between industry members and OGA, where we look at particular initiatives and how we collaborate together. There's a great sharing of examples you know, that, that are out there as well, so people share their examples at conferences. What we want to do in OGA is to, is to sort of uh, try and focus that and synchronize that a little bit more and, and pull it together because it's all out there. So we just sort of put our arms around it and try and pull that all together in an in a even more strategic way of collaboration. first thing to remember is that you know, decommissioning is not doom and gloom. It's a part of the life cycle of the oil and gas business. So it shouldn't be looked at as a discrete entity. It's all a part of a, a continuum, so you should be planning it in late life so that you can do it efficiently. So that's the first point, I think, to make about decommissioning. The second is around the supply chain. 
We've already talked about delivering a capability which can be globally exported. I think that is incredibly important and we need to continue to do that. Inside the UK itself, there's also developments happening. There's a deep water port opened up in August in, in Shetland called Dales Vaux. That will be the first port that can take deeper water um, uh, platforms in to, to deconstruct onshore. So that's also an important uh, development in the UK. So it's not doom and gloom, it's a part of the life cycle of the oil and gas business.